Wake up, Link. Hi everyone, Richard from Digital Foundry here, and this is The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild running on the new Nintendo Switch. Now I saw this, and indeed captured this, at the London event. And joining me to talk about this is John Linneman, who actually captured the same demo in Frankfurt. Hi Rich, how's it going this morning? Yeah, fantastic. I suppose between us then, that means we have upwards of 40 minutes of capture or so, which should provide some interesting footage here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so essentially this video is a, like a compilation of both of our captured runs, is that correct? Yep, that's exactly right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see instantly that you actually put your clothes on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll see a little bit of that later, I think. But <laughs> <laughs> So this was actually my second time playing the demo. So I, I uh -huh. initially played it, and then they said, oh, you can capture it. So I went in for a second round. So I was already familiar with what I had to do here. Good stuff. Yeah, so it's a very, I mean, what is it? We get like 20 minutes or something with it, and yeah. um, you can either follow the kind of narrative path that it lays out, or you can just sort of muck about and do whatever you want, is that correct? Yep, that's pretty much right. Mm -hmm. I suppose we should get the uh, kind of basics out of the way first. Uh, 720p, pretty much locked 30 frames per second when you're playing in handheld form. That's right. And 900p when you're playing docked with the HDTV. Exactly right. And I guess we're going to be taking a look at some of the frame rate metrics a bit later on, but overall I think we can safely say that even as things stand, performance isn't really an issue on this one. It was a substantial improvement from the Wii U build that we had played earlier, even though that was perhaps an older build, so that version may have also improved. But here we're pretty much looking at a locked 30 frames per second most of the time, which I think is pretty important here. Yeah, I mean, it really does represent a huge improvement over the E3 build on the Wii U that we saw, which was, you know, 20 to 30 FPS, sometimes even lower, I think. Yeah. So I'm hoping that there's a strong optimization push on the Wii U version, because there's a lot of people out there bulking at the price of the Switch, but they still want a great Zelda experience. Exactly. And, well, first of all, right here in the video, actually, I was doing a little bit of edge counting but you can also kind of appreciate, uh, you know, some of, some of the image quality details going on here. It looks, it does look relatively clean for 900p, but I'm a little disappointed with the texture filtering there. It's pretty poor. But now, actually, I, sh I have to point out that we're about to switch over to a little bit of frame rate analysis just for a moment to show one of the only points in the entire demo where there was actually slowdown. So it typically seems to happen when there's depth of field on screen. Oh, so really? as I jump down here, you can see it kind of drops for a second, but then it jumps right back up. Yeah, also alpha effects seem to cause the issue there. Yeah, 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 exactly. I mean, I actually ran all of my 20 minutes of footage through our frame rate analysis tool, and it seemed to only drop once when there was like a massive screen filling, fiery explosion uh, in one of my kamikaze runs against the enemies. So, yeah, I mean, I think it's pretty much uh, the ex definitely the exception rather than the rule, whereas on the Wii U E3 build we saw it was kind of looking pretty rough throughout. Yeah, it was pretty much dipping during every single combat sequence and often just exploring around. There was hitches and skips, whereas here it seems to be limited mostly to alpha effects and post-processing effects, though there is one moment later that we'll see where there's a little bit of a dip just running around, which may be a streaming issue. Mm -hmm. But really, we're looking at a very stable frame rate all around here. But, uh, oh, yeah, check out the nice volumetric light shafts here in the temple. They actually remain visible even when the sun is off screen. Really, though, there's just a lot of strong art direction here, I think. Yeah, I think in terms of art artistic direction, obviously, Nintendo can be the masters at this sort of thing, and it looks absolutely beautiful. What I will say, though, is that the screens that we were playing on at the event were really badly set up, and the aliasing just looked horrible uh, on, on some of the, well, many of the games, including this one. And, um, you know, again, I think that, well, there's no massive technological leap here. I think there is just the case that it's a simple Wii U port here, and we're getting just better performance simply by virtue right, exactly. of the more modern hardware. 
Sure, it's definitely not a leap for a console, but I think it's the handheld mode that really impresses here since we're getting visuals that greatly exceed what we've seen in the past, even on other more powerful mobile devices. It looked incredibly crisp on the actual display itself, and most importantly, it seemed to run very, very smoothly in handheld mode as well. I don't recall seeing any additional dips when in handheld mode, honestly. Yeah, it was seemed to be pretty much a locked 30 frames per second, pretty much the same kind of performance level that we got um, uh, running on the full docked mode. And that's kind of curious from my perspective, because we know the GPU clocks we know that you get like a two and a half times boost to GPU power, and yet the resolution goes from 720 to 900 rather than 720 to 1080, which is what we do get with Mario Kart. So I'm kind of curious what the limitation may be that's sort of holding it back there. Maybe it is the alpha effects, who knows? But um, yeah, quite fascinating to see there. I think, you know, what's going to be interesting, the big comparison not so much the handheld mode versus uh, the HDTV mode, because it looks really solid on both, even from this demo build. I think it's going to be the Wii U version versus, the, versus either of the Switch versions that's going to be the real kind of uh, fascinating comparison here. Right. Now, the, interesting for me, though, is that this is kind of uh, Nintendo's first take on a lot of somewhat more modern techniques with rendering as well as really their first game that I can recall where they went for a full physics driven open world kind of experience of this size. Yeah, I mean it's fascinating really because hardware is getting better, the the demands of the game are, are getting higher and obviously Nintendo have kind of, you know, uh, got to use limited development resources to to get the job done and you know we've seen like the sony first party studios you know they're scaling up massively to create the likes of uncharted 4 and i think almost uh, the move to doing a hybrid handheld home console kind of works here in that they don't really need to push on to the you know the kind of insane art and uh, technological evolution that we've seen from like the PS4 and the Xbox One but at the same time it's kind of like creating a sort of two-tier system here the handheld stuff is looking absolutely incredible because it's you know better than last gen but at the same mm -hmm. time I just felt that playing games on the full screen even this one it just felt kind of dated in many ways yeah I mean you're not wrong about that and I still want to see how if this actually feels when playing on a properly calibrated set because I do actually believe that the poor settings used on those televisions does sort of negatively paint uh, my impressions at least of what the Switch looks like on an actual TV. I mean we've learned the native resolution of some of these games but when you actually saw it on those televisions like Mario Kart, for instance, it really didn't look like a full 1080p to my eyes. And that was due to the extra sharpening and uh, edge enhancement and all the things they had turned on on the television. It just made it look blurry, yet also overly sharpened. And so it's hard to judge the console experience fully based on that. Mm -hmm. I mean, another thing that which is quite interesting is the concept that we're going to be playing full home games on a handheld and I'm curious as to how well that's going to hold up because it didn't particularly go down uh, well on PlayStation Vita. Yeah, that's true, but you have to think about the types of games Nintendo makes. Now, Zelda is obviously a large sprawling adventure, but many of their games are more pick up and play. I mean, Mario, Kirby, Mario Kart, Pikmin, Star Fox, you know, those types of games they're pretty easy to set down and just pick up and keep playing, especially if you put your system to sleep. So I think it's a little bit different than something like when they try to adapt Uncharted to the Vita. I mean, that's a large narrative-driven type of game, and those are not so easy to just pick up and keep playing. And more importantly, a lot of the Sony portable franchises suffered from a lot of loading times and other technical issues on the handheld that kind of made it less friendly towards that format. So I'm feeling like Nintendo is just better suited to bringing their big franchises to a system like this and making them feel very playable on the go. Mm -hmm. And also I'm curious about how stuff like the UI is going to change. So uh, Zelda doesn't actually have too much of a HUD. 
Right. Uh, but, you know, you can see that there are little icons and whatnot popping up from time to time. So I'm kind of curious to see whether they are going to rescale those on the handheld oh, so yeah. they are actually more visible. That's true. So, yeah, I mean, there's, there's quite a lot of um, sort of variables they have to take into account here. So, yeah, there is that. And uh, we also know the battery life of this game, three hours, according to Nintendo's Oof. press release. Yeah. I mean... Yeah, we should talk about the uh, battery life situation because uh, obviously um, it isn't great. <laughs> no. I think uh, they rate rate it from what was it something like uh, two point five? Is it to either six or eight hours? I can't recall which one there. I think it was six hours was the maximum. Yeah, I mean, I think we can be pretty much uh, guaranteed that that will be like a two D virtual console game or something that's running there for the, for the full battery life. Well, now to be fair here, you have to keep in mind that the original three uh, DS battery life estimates were three to five hours, I believe. Hmm. Uh, which isn't really all that different, I'd say. So if you were okay with the original 3DS battery life, then I feel like the Switch should be adequate. But it also seems to take three hours to charge the Switch. That isn't good. Which may be a bit excessive. <laughs> well, the good news uh, is that it has a straight USB 3 uh, Type-C connection right. uh, on the handheld. And... That's used for the docking, and you can also plug in like a standard USB uh, 3.1 uh, Type C adapter power power cell. Right. So you know a lot of people out there have this type of uh, technology for uh, recharging their mobile phone on the go, and it may well be the case that you could just attach, you know, standard cheapo battery, get some extra battery life on the go and or recharge it, which uh, I kind of think is a really smart move uh, from Nintendo there. Oh yeah, I, I agree. I think switching away from those proprietary connectors that they've been using for years now is definitely the right move. And it, and it should help make the Switch more livable when you're out in the field. Yeah. So that's definitely a key there. Yeah, I mean, you know, we kind of had a long chat about this yesterday, but my opinion hasn't sort of changed here. I think what we're looking at here is... Uh, possibly the greatest handheld ever made. Well, definitely the greatest handheld ever made. And uh, it's really fascinating to see what Tegra technology can do when it's kind of set up for a dedicated handheld. Right. But at the same time, you know, um, I just can't shake the disappointment, the massive disappointment I felt for this as a home console where it's kind of like, guys, not only does it look the same as the Wii U, it's actually a lot of the lineup is the same games. And, uh, you know, it's when you, you know, there's a kind of definite excitement when there's a new console coming on. You want to know what the new experience is. You want to know how it improves on the last one. Now, obviously, the way it improves there is through um, the handheld situation. Whoa, that was a big frame. Yeah, that was, that was the second drop I was talking about. Right. Where I, maybe streaming related, where it just kind of drops for a second. Yeah, that was curious. But yeah, going back to what I was saying, it was, um, you know, I do think this is a phenomenal handheld. And um, I don't know. Here's the thing, John. Everything we've seen, uh, apart from the kind of Super Mario Odyssey teaser thus far, has been, you know, essentially Wii U work. So yeah, it's going to look like a Wii U. Um, have we actually seen anything which is built from the ground up for the Switch with its very different GPU, very different hardware setup. So, you know, possibly Ma uh, Mario, uh, uh, possibly ARMS, which, uh, you know, isn't a, a sort of super deep game, but it certainly looked really impressive, I thought. Yeah, I think um, we're just going to have to wait for that. Games like Xenoblade Chronicles 2, for instance, and other titles such as that will be built up from for the Switch rather than ported over. So yeah, a lot of these early titles, like including Zelda, were definitely engineered with the Wii U in mind. So we definitely kind of have to wait to see what they can actually do with the Switch when they dedicate the resources to developing just for it. Though at the same time, keep in mind, I mean, the early footage of Mario Odyssey, didn't that come out to something like 720p based on the trailer? Yeah, this is the thing. Um, we just don't really know how things are going to scale and how the GPU power is going to be used. We haven't really got a full measure of what the GPU is actually capable of. Now, I've got a theory here, which is, I mean, I saw Splatoon 2 yesterday, which is running at 720p, whether you're using it in handheld or full docks mode. 
and it really didn't look impressive docked I've got to say I mean you know basically all of the visual artifacts of the Wii U version no anti-aliasing really terrible texture filtering that kind of thing it was all there but then I thought to myself well they've got two and a half times more GPU power if I was a developer I would be uh, first of all targeting the handheld experience you know making sure the game looks really good plays really well in the handheld form and then I would actually be thinking about how to enhance the game for the docked experience once that handheld experience is absolutely where you want it to be so maybe that is the way forward there maybe I, I assume that's what they're going to be doing with Splatoon and in terms of uh, Mario maybe that one too so that would be my theory there but you know the alternative which is kind of equally valid is that you you know you target it in home console mode and then you simply uh, reduce the resolution see where you're at and then take stuff away and that sounds really brutal in theory but because you're operating on a much smaller screen you can actually get away with quite a lot of compromises that you won't really notice yeah that's kind of how it was on the Vita I felt the games felt yeah, really impressive I mean, until you blew them up via a capture card or the PSTV. Yeah. So maybe that's the strategy there, and I'm sure there is a lot they can get away with in terms of reducing visual fidelity without it being so noticeable on a really tiny screen. It's actually quite remarkable when we actually got uh, the ability to capture Vita uh, before the uh, PlayStation TV came out, and we were looking at these games blown up on the on the big screen. It was like, whoa, <laughs> this, this doesn't look this doesn't look like um, how I remember it. So yeah, you know. They can, obviously there's two um, strategies there that they can pursue. Um, but, you know, I don't think we need to, we can't really um, forget that there is a huge gulf in GPU power there. I think the way it's set up is that it is kind of designed for 720p handheld and higher resolutions when yeah. docked. I think that's the, the best way forward. Now, it's interesting you mentioned that, that theory, though, because to me it almost sounds like developers are going to have to contend with the same thing as the PS4 and the PS4 Pro, as well as Xbox One and Scorpio, where you have to target one platform and also make it work on another with significantly more GPU power. Yeah, mm -hmm. I guess at least they have the benefit here of everything being right in front of them from day one, exactly. rather than having to ret retrofit um, enhancements into an existing game. Although maybe bearing in mind the amount of Wii U ports, that's exactly <laughs> what we're seeing here. Exactly. Uh, oh yeah, okay, so yeah, what we're seeing now here is a bit of the UI in Zelda, yep. and actually this was quite confusing f uh, for me, because the kind of main actuation button on, uh, on Western consoles is always the one at the bottom. Correct. And uh, on on uh, the Switch demos we played, it was the Japanese standard, which is the far right button, yep, which is exactly. the A button there. So I wa the reason why my clothes weren't, <laughs> I didn't put on my clothes for so <laughs> long into the demo was, hold on a minute, you know, nothing's happening when I'm using the UI, and, you know, <laughs> and then I kind of realized all of the time it's telling you to press A, and A isn't really where you expect it to be. So yeah, I did finally manage to put my clothes on. I didn't get that big axe that you had though. No, I, just I found that weed, somewhere along the way. <laughs> <laughs> so closing thoughts, John. Well, I mean, you know, it's Zelda. We know what it looks like. It looks like the Wii U version, but it runs better. It's sharper. And this is going to be a heck of a game on a portable system. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, the Wii U comparison is going to be absolutely fascinating. Okay, so we're going to leave it there. Uh, thanks for watching. Do like and subscribe if you'd like to see more Digital Foundry. And do remember that supporters of the Digital Foundry Patreon can grab this video as a download from www.digitalfoundry.net. And there's a bonus surprise there, more extended commentary-free footage. So do check that out. Uh, but that's all we got for now. Thanks for watching.